Well, all right, God bless you and welcome to today's service. Amen. We made it. Thank you for those who have been patient waiting for us to 
iron out our technical challenges. I won't say difficulties. They were just some challenges as we are still getting used to, uh, you know, the new system that we have here. Uh, shall I say the high tech equipment? Amen. That's really the reality as we are still getting used to the brand new high tech equipment that we have here in the sanctuary. But I'm coming to you live from our beautiful new church in sunny and balmy St. Petersburg, Florida. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you wherever you are watching from. I say that you are here on purpose, that this is absolutely a time and a season in your life where God is ordering your steps. He is making sure that you are where you need to be. He is making sure that you are with who you need to be. Amen. God is ordering your steps. The Bible says as many as are the sons or daughters of, of the Lord, amen, they are led by God. I believe that you have been led here on today. God has something for you. He has a word for you. He has a confirmation for you. There is an anointing that's going to come upon you, amen, and you will begin to see the Lord do brand new things in your life. You will begin to see the Lord begin to bring forth even the desires of your heart. There are prayer requests that you have had. There are things that you have been believing for. There are things that you have come before the Lord asking him to put his blessing on and many of you have been in prayer you have been in prayer in intercession for your loved ones for family members even for yourself come on even for yourself where you have been asking the Lord to speak to you you want to make the right decisions right you want confirmation concerning a relationship concerning a decision concerning a move I believe that many of you are going to get your confirmation on today but I want to say this again I want to be very very clear I say it very humbly but with great confidence Confidence. Amen. There is a powerful anointing, praise the Lord, that is active in the body of Christ at this time, and it is for sure flowing and active in this church. I'm getting ready to share some praise reports with you simply because y'all need to know what is going on. You need to know what God is doing, how powerfully he is moving, amen. I don't have time to share them all. I really, really wish I did. And we're gonna do some more this coming Wednesday morning, amen. But I'm gonna share a few here with you today because I want you to get encouraged. I want you to be stirred up. The same power that has brought the praise reports and the breakthroughs and the blessings and the victories to the people that I'm going to share with you about their, their story today, that same power is here in the room. It is active. Amen. And because there are no boundaries with God, that he is a God of no limits. Amen. The Lord can reach you right where you are. He can touch you right where you are. Amen. There is anointing power in the Holy Ghost that is coming to you right where you are right now. I believe that some of you are actually having a, a shift, a physical reaction, a physical response to the anointing even now. I hear all the time from people, can you explain to me why I began to shake? Can you explain to me why I felt like there was like, you know, it, one person said even like an electrical current uh, she, she felt it was going through her body over resurrection weekend as she was here in the sanctuary with us. Can you explain to me why I suddenly feel emotional or I'm crying? Can you explain to me why my hands are getting tingly or hot or whatever it is? But all of those are very normal physical responses to the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which is raw power, raw dunamis, like literal electric force, electric power. Amen. That's a very simple, simplistic way of explaining it, but that's what we got for today. Amen. So some of you are having a physical reaction even now. That's the anointing. That's the anointing of the Lord. There are some people here, I feel the Holy Ghost talking to me about what's going on with some of you right now. There are some people who are just, you know, you, you have like a quickening in your heart. You have a quickening in your spirit. That's not palpitations. That's excitement. That's you encountering the power of God. Uh, you, you are getting in the spirit. You are in the spirit. You are experiencing the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you're having a physical response. There's a lot of people here that you are actually getting excited. You're getting excited. You just know that you know there's going to be something for you 
in this service on today. And I want to, and you're right, this is your day. Today is your day. This is about to be your moment. Amen. God has something supernatural for you. The Lord wants to do a miracle in your life. But I must be very, very clear, lest anybody be confused. Today's message is not just about love relationships. It's not just about romantic relationships, although it is for sure going to be that as well. It is for sure going to be about love and romantic relationships and marriages, amen. But it's going to be about relationships in general, relationships, partnerships, and concerning, you know, in your business, right, in your friendships, in the people that, uh, that are in your life, anybody who is connected to you or has access to you. We're going to talk about the power of relationships. The Lord began to speak to me. He said that we are in a time and season where he is leading his people. He's ordering your steps so that you are in next level relationships. And that says so much right there, because if there are relationships that are higher level, then can we acknowledge that there's some relationships that are way down there, amen, and they are not for you. But God is going to be leading many of you, amen, to next level relationships. There is somebody that God has for you to meet. There is somebody right now, I feel to prophesy, there is somebody right now in this world, amen, and God has his eye on you, but he also has his eye on them, and God has his hand on you, and he's about to put his hand on them, and when the two of you meet, something significant will happen. There's somebody who can help you. There's somebody who can uh, uh, promote you. There is somebody who can give you a life-changing opportunity. There is somebody who can, uh, 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 what is it called, endorse you. There's somebody who can impart wisdom to you, amen, that will help you go further faster than your counterparts or even your peers have, amen. There is somebody who can release an anointing over you, and that's me for many of you today. I say that humbly, but I'm very aware of, of, of what my assignment is and the responsibility that goes with it. But there is an anointing that is going to be released on you today and that's going to help you, amen. So this is a word that is for absolutely everybody, from the highest of the high to, the, to people who are just starting out. There are people that God has for you who can really help you, help you in your life and bless you in your life. And he knows what you have need of. He knows what you are struggling with in your heart uh, and perhaps that is connected to experiences or relationships you've had in the past. And the Lord also knows where he wants to take you. He knows the plans he has for you, amen. And and if you had already done all that you can do in your life, in your business, in your ministry, in your world, then you would be at home in heaven with the angels and there would be nothing more for you to do or experience in the earth. No, the devil is a liar. You are still here on the planet because God has more for your life. So whether you are a CFO, a CEO, or you are just starting out and you've just written your vision and made it plain, today's word is for you and God is connecting you with next level relationships in this this season. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a little foundation. That's a little foundation, but it's going to be prophetic. Amen. And I already know, and I say this in the name of Jesus, there are many people, oh yes, there are many people who are going to come very quickly and you're going to come and you're going to tell what began to happen. And, and who you met and, and, and what happened, amen. It'll be different for everybody. But there are so many, I feel it in the spirit, who are going to receive from this word. You're already pulling on the anointing, praise the Lord. And you will see the Lord do for you what we're going to prophesy on today, amen. My name is Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. I'm so blessed and so honored that you are here with us on today. It is going to be a beautiful, powerful word. Now, when we finish this live prophetic service, we do have uh, two more services later on today. Wild, I'm excited, amen. At 9 o'clock p.m., we're going to be live on CTN, amen. Check your TV guide or your cable guide uh, to find out your local channel, praise the Lord, but you'll be able to watch us on TV. And then at midnight, we have a brand new episode of Miracles at Midnight for You, and I believe that is going 
to bless you. For those who are watching by way of internet, possibly on one of our social media sites, I would ask you to take a moment and share this broadcast. There are so many people who don't follow this ministry. They, may, they might not follow any ministry, right? But they need to hear about Jesus and they need to hear that there is, that God, number one, that God is real that God is real and that he is a God who has a plan for every single person's life. He is a God who cares about every single person, amen. He loves, he loves you, he loves them. He has a plan for you, he has a plan for them. And his plans for, for you and for them, me too, amen, they're good, good plans, praise the Lord. Possibly there are some people who are ready to give up. They're ready to give up. They are tired. They are exhausted. There is so much uncertainty in the world. Perhaps they've been through so much pain, so much heartache, so many challenges. They need to hear a good prophetic word, amen, that will give them hope and preach some faith into them and release the genuine anointing of the Holy Spirit, which can change things, which produces change in our lives, good changes, amen. So when you share the video, that puts it in front of more people, amen. And we just want to reach as many people as we can for Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I thank you for that. If you're watching on television, I am so excited that you got to be with us today uh, by way of TV. We thank God for each and every one of you, amen. And we are standing with you for your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Before I pray and begin to prophesy today's word, is it all right with you if I share a few very recent praise reports? And by very recent, I mean like within the last 48 to 72 hours. These came in, amen. And I wanted to encourage you because the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. And what does that mean? That means what God does for one, he will do for you as well. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you. Praise the Lord. If he does it for me, he'll do it for you as well. The very same thing. So as you hear these things, I want you to get encouraged because these are the types of things that are going on in this ministry. And I'm going to say very, very clear. I believe you're connected for a reason. I believe you are here for a reason. God wants to do supernatural, miraculous things in your life. So let this encourage you. I won't read last names. That would not be appropriate. So I'll just say first names. This is from Patricia. And this came in on Wednesday of this week. So just four days ago. And she said, she wrote, today I found out I'm receiving in a couple weeks a check for $704, totally unexpected, an awesome blessing from the Lord. Well, I don't know about you, but I know that's a $700 check that you weren't expecting. That is incredibly good news, and that is a blessing from the Lord. But then it goes even further. Amen. It goes even further than that. We had Cindy, who wrote to us just yesterday, and Cindy said, uh, she wrote to us, she said, we were down to very little money and we don't get money until the 15th. You know, a lot of people are on a fixed income. A lot of people, you know, they get their paycheck, they get their, their money on set dates. And so, <laughs> so here's the deal. She said, then we got a call and $1,500 transferred to us. Praise the Lord. Now, when I see somebody type praise the Lord all in caps, Cindy's excited and Cindy better be excited. And Cindy, if you're watching, I have a word for you. That is just the beginning. That is just the beginning, woman of God. Watch what the Lord is going to do for you as we move into the summer months. Watch and see what will be. Get ready to testify yet again in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, look at this. I didn't even know this. And then she typed, she, after her, praise the Lord, all in caps. Then she typed, you always say, get ready to testify. Uh-huh. So I just want to make sure I do. Such perfect timing. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Cindy, that's just the beginning. You will testify again. Amen. This uh, testimony, this praise report came from Roger, and um, this was on, on Friday. And I love this. This is amazing. Did you guys see this? You got to let me know. Roger said, I just paid cash for a home. I am walking in this wealth because of sowing abundantly here in this fertile soil. Amen. Now, I don't know if you realize it. I mean, I do, and Roger knows, and many of you know, that homes are not 
cheap these days. These days, homes are very expensive. But it's like I always say, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we need to like take the term expensive out of the conversation because what I think is expensive or what you think is expensive or what Roger may have thought was expensive, it is not expensive to the Lord. God will rise to meet the need of any occasion. Amen. He is a God of no limits in the name of Jesus. And this man of God found out. He said, I, I'm a witness. I just paid cash for a home and I'm walking in this wealth because of sowing abundantly. Well, that's what the Bible says. So, so sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly, but so generously and you will reap generously. And I'll tell you something, when you pay cash for a home, and you better get ready because you're going to pay cash for a home too. It is an amazing feeling because you know that the Lord put it in your hand. And you are, first of all, watch how quickly those transactions go through. <laughs> you're not dealing with credit. You're not dealing with, with financial systems. You're just cutting the deal. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then oftentimes when you have the ability to pay cash for a property, you know how they say, and we know this is not the truth because only Jesus is king, but you know how the term is cash is king, right? And that's not an accurate way of saying it. The Bible says it accurately. The Bible says money answereth all things. That's what it says in the book of Proverbs. Well, it also gives you negotiating power. It answers all things. When you are paying cash, people will deal with you. They will negotiate with you. They want back cash money. Praise the Lord. So it gives you negotiating power. And I am so excited that Roger got to have that experience, but he's also in his home and he's not having to worry about a crazy mortgage payment, you know, crazy interest rates, nothing like that. Boom, one and done. Cut the deal, get the key. God did it, amen. But I love that he gave all glory to the Lord. It is the Lord's system of seed time and harvest. It is God's system of sowing into a prophet and being able to pull out a prophet's reward. Amen. That's Luke 6, 38. That's Matthew 10, 41. Amen. And those are God's systems and protocols that if we will work the protocols, the protocols work. Amen. And I congratulate you, man of God. Congratulations on the new home. Praise God. Don't hesitate to send us pictures. We love to see that kind of thing. Amen. Now, this is the one, uh, maybe this will be the last one I do for today. I'll roll this, this other one over into Wednesday because we have more that I had to take out, so I'll do more on Wednesday. But this is the one that's it's very, very interesting because God is incredibly detailed. He's incredibly detailed. Yesterday... Um, so today is Sunday, the 14th of April. Yesterday was Saturday, the 13th of April, right? I'm just, these are the dates at the live, at the time of this live broadcast. And my husband and I were traveling by plane from New York, Western New York. And we had gone because our home there is in the path of totality. We just had the full solar eclipse. And so we wanted to go and I, the Lord told me to prophesy through that. Amen. And we were coming back from New York to here, to Florida, last night, late yesterday afternoon. And I was on the plane, and my husband was napping. My little dog was on my lap, as usual. And for some reason, I just felt to roll up my window. And I had, I had the screen down because I, I thought I might want to nap too, but I didn't. And then I just felt in my spirit to pull up the, and look out the window. I'm going to be very transparent with you. I had never seen a sight like I saw out that window. And right out loud, I mean, I can't be embarrassed. I have to just tell you the truth. Right out loud, I said, whoa, what is that? <laughs> because it was something I had never seen from the air before. Let me show you a picture of what I saw from the window because I was so impressed. I grabbed my phone and took a picture. Is there another picture? I think that's the one with the rainbow, is it? It's the only one I got. All right, I sent two. Okay, not two. Yeah. Yes, it's in the thread. All right, so when you, when you get the other one, we're going to put that up as well. But let me tell you what that is, and maybe we can blow it up to show 
I don't know if they can see that very well, but those are the Smoky Mountains. And do you know how I know? Because when I, so I'm immediately taken. I find them gorgeous and fascinating. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, again, be transparent. You know, I'm looking at all the details. And I'm fascinated with the pattern and all of that. And I begin to talk right out loud. To who? Not to the Lord, I guess. My husband's sleeping. The dog's just sleeping on my lap. I said, now, what is that? Because I see this little, I'm, what, is that a house? Is, is that a garden? Is that like a road? No, what is that? What is that? Look at that. Look at that. What is that? And then I look over. You know how on, on planes they have a screen telling you uh, information? What, is, what speed you're going at? Uh, the, the, how high are you in the air? You know, uh, and, and where you are, your location. So I looked on the screen. It said, the Great Smoky Mountains. Well, I began talking out loud again. And I couldn't help it. Over and over. over the prophets are like this. Over and over, here's me, the Great Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains, and I can't stop looking at them. Put it up again, the Great Smoky Mountains. I'm saying it over and over, the Great Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains. Look at them, look at that, the Great Smoky Mountains. 30 minutes later, if that, I open up my email, because I like to pray for people. I take time when I'm on the plane. I pray for people. I said, let me pray for people. So I open up the email, and I begin going through. And here's an email that had just come in, and it came in yesterday. It's a woman named Lisa, and she's also a minister. And she wrote, I'm going to read it word for word. She said, on March 21st, which was... You know, our, our, we were in Resurrection Sunday service. While I was on a vacation trip at the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, I had a dream with Prophetess Jolyn, and after much prayer and learning of her upcoming inauguration of church, I decided to attend in person. Not quite knowing why the Holy Spirit was sending me to visit St. Petersburg, but I obeyed. During the service, I received much revelation about many things that made more sense to me. And then she gave, I won't share her information, but she, oh, she, okay. And then she said, as an ordained minister, because she's, she's in ministry as well, but as an ordained minister, I received the word of the Lord spoken through the prophet. Amen. Amen. I personally came into agreement with a word spoken about someone not having to pay taxes. If you were in the room, or if you were watching online, you saw it happen. I got a prophetic word, it came out of nowhere, and I just began to flow with it. And, and, and if you were in the room, or if you were watching, you saw it happen. And it was specifically about not, being, not having to pay taxes. And it, I was, was specific. It's not a small amount, this is a big amount. It's not small. It's a big amount. And she said she came into agreement with that. And she said, for I had sold a house last year, of which I was told I would have to pay capital gains taxes. How much? $25,000 in capital gains taxes. She said, today I find my taxes and my accountant said I owe nothing. Nothing. They wiped it out. Wiped it out. She said this, you ready for this? So not only does she not have to pay her $25,000, but as a matter of fact, she actually has a refund due coming to her, she says. I'm reading this word for word. Her final, final thing here, I knew I had to testify because I sowed a seed of 777 to the ministry. Pause. If you were here, or even watching online, you know that we took up a, se a seven offering toward that and other prophetic words. I said, just get seven. For some, it'll be 77, 777, 7,070, whatever, whatever. And she did 777 to the ministry, a powerful number, very powerful. She said, I sowed a seed of 777 
to the ministry, but God erased $25,000 of IRS debt. Forever grateful to God and his faithful prophetess, Dr. Jolin. Well, you need to get ready too, because I don't know how to break it to you, but the Lord telling me to look out my window and I see the Smoky Mountains, and I start saying Smoky Mountains, Smoky Mountains, what is that, old great Smoky Mountains over and over? You're connected to us. You're connected to us. And you're, you are gonna be used, and you are gonna be used of the Lord in a great move of God. Amen. Now there's a major confirmation for you. Major, amen. As far as the financial thing goes, he's just getting started, praise the Lord. You'll, there will be more to come, amen. Praise God. Well, I hope that encourages everybody listening. Those are just a few of the things that have been happening in and through this ministry over the past few days. Amen. To those of you who are partners with this ministry, to those of you who sow into this ministry, to those of you who support this ministry, and this is your home, amen, God is at work in your life. There is no way that God will not honor and bless your obedience. And there is no way in the name of Jesus that your seed will not multiply in this fertile soil. The devil, devil is a liar. There is multiplication going on even now. There are things being arranged for you even now in the name of Jesus. And I'm just going to close this off by saying this. What might have happened if she did not obey and come? What might have happened if she did obey and come, but didn't sow the seed? We don't know. We don't know for sure. But she knows, and I know, that her obedience and her sowing is what brought that harvest. Not only the debt complete, let me tell you something, $25,000 is not a small amount. Not only the debt wiped out, but she's got money coming. Isn't that just like God? And he is still working in that regard. And what he does for one, he will do for another. So I don't know what you have need of. I don't know what you are believing for. But this is normal for us. And it's, it's about to be normal for you as well because God is a supernatural God. Amen. On Wednesday, there's going to be some healing testimonies that I believe you need to hear as well. And we'll focus in on those on Wednesday. And some other things. Let's pray, and I want to get into today's word. Amen. There is power and purpose in God-ordained relationships, and God is sending next-level relationships. Let's pray. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I worship you, Lord, and I exalt thee. I exalt thee, God. I say that you are mighty. You are amazing. You are massive. You are mega. You are holy. You are high above it all. You are amazing. You are awesome. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the God above all gods. You are the only true God. We worship you today, O oh God, in spirit and in truth. We lift high your holy name and we say, Jesus, 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 take your place in our lives, the highest place. We put you first, we put you first, which is your rightful position. And now, King Jesus, I say, as your servant, that I bow low before you. I bow low at your feet, that you alone may be lifted high. Jesus, I ask you to have your way in this service. Let not my thoughts or my words ever interfere with what you want to do or want to say, but have your way. You say whatever you need to say and do whatever you want to do, that the people present may be blessed and that you may receive your glory. I pray right now that every person listening, that their mind and their heart is open to receive the fullness of what you are about to do and say and bring forth in this season. I thank you, God, that it is the season for next level relationships. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen, hallelujah. Let us begin, praise the Lord. If you're just coming in, you can Rewind later and watch the beginning, but let's go. If you're ready to rock and roll with this thing, say, let's go. Bring it on. Amen. Hallelujah. So as I sought the Lord for right now words, you know, I was up 
uh, in the night. I was up on fourth watch praying about the, the situation with Israel, praying about the war that has begun in Israel, right? And uh, finally, the Lord did give me a word about that. I posted on social media. This is a time when we are to be focusing not on our political ideas or opinions. No, no, no. We have got to keep our eyes on the kingdom, on the kingdom agenda, and on the word of God. What does the word say? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, all you need to tell the people for this moment concerning that situation, number one, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let me get this out because I don't want to miss anything about it. That is where the, the kingdom... Uh, headquarters will be. <laughs> I mean, the, the, say it the way it is. That's where the kingdom headquarters will be located. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, the temple will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. That will be the geographic location of it. At some point, Jesus is coming, and that time is going to be very, very soon. His feet will touch down. It will be a hostile takeover. He will begin a cleansing in the land. The temple will be rebuilt, and he will rule and reign from Jerusalem. So we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. And that is out of, uh, let's see, that's out of Psalm 122, verse 6. And it's so important that the Bible actually attaches a blessing to it. The Bible says that he or she who prays for the peace of Jerusalem shall prosper, shall prosper. And then the Lord spoke, he said, and also keep your eyes and your intentions, your heart fixed upon your assignment. And the assignment that we all have in the church is the great commission. Go ye into all the world, Mark 16, verse 15, and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. We must tell uh, people about the Lord Jesus Christ and redemption by Jesus before it is eternally too late. So that is where the focus and the conversation needs to be, is fulfilling the Great Commission, telling people about Jesus. And then look here, and then we are to occupy. We are to occupy rooms and realms. We are to discern our assignment, discern the people we belong to be with, and occupy, occupy, fulfill your destiny. And that looks like occupying rooms and realms, spheres of influence, even as we worship in uh, sanctuaries like this one and many, many, many others all across the world. But we don't just worship from the sanctuary, we legislate from the sanctuary. You say, what does that mean? That means we we enforce the word of God, righteousness and holiness and the truth of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the life and the truth. Amen. And so we do so. Praise the Lord. And there in Luke 19, verse 13, it talks how it talks about how Jesus called his 10 servants and gave them 10 pounds. And then he gave them the the instruction after giving them money. He gives them the instruction, occupy until I come. And so we see that there is a wealth transfer that is connected to and precedes the occupation. So we are to keep our eyes on that. And as things continue to be shaken, even in Israel, and this is a sign of the times, this is Mark, uh, tw uh, yeah, Mark 24, praise the Lord. And I believe possibly even a precursor to other things. We'll talk more about that perhaps in the week to come as things develop. But there is a wealth transfer that is underway and there is a wealth transfer that is coming and it is only going to increase as things begin to be shaken because we are in a time where the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdom of our God, amen. And so this is where we're at, praise the Lord. But I began to speak to the Lord and say, Father, is there anything else you would have me to say about current conditions? Conditions. And he said, yes, I want you to talk about the importance of relationships in this hour. He said, I need my people rightly aligned. I need my people in alignment for their assignment. I need their people connected to the people that I need to connect them to so that they can be strong, they can be focused, and they can be in the center of their destiny and not thrown off course. I said, oh my goodness, this is actually an end time word. He said, yes, <laughs> this is an end time word word to the body of Christ. And I believe as I get into this, you're going to see why. So as I'm seeking the Lord for these right now words to impart, he spoke the word relationships. In the midst of these global concerns, Iran and Israel and the awareness that there are powers that be who are trying to literally 
care, pay attention now. They're trying to literally incite a world war which in their minds, demonized minds, will create the chaos required to introduce the one world order. Because to their demonized minds, when there is enough death, destruction, and chaos in the world, in the world people will take whatever deal you offer them for peace to make it stop. So that is the incentive in their demonized minds for, for, for trying to incite a world war. The chaos creates the conditions required in their minds to introduce the one world order. And yet, in the midst of this, the Lord is speaking about relationships and being connected to the right people and in the right relationships and connected in the right places at this time, at this crucial moment in time. Relationships are so crucial that God is calling our attention to them at this time because he knows, he knows what many people have yet to acknowledge, and that is this. When God wants to bless you, when God wants to help you, when God wants to position you to fly high in your destiny, when God wants to promote you, when God wants to assist you, when God wants to equip you, he will oftentimes send a person in the earth into your life. Amen. And on the flip side, when the devil wants to jack you up, when the devil wants to break you down, when the devil wants to break your heart and mess up your mind and get you distracted and get you off course, maybe pull you into sin, maybe pull you off your path, maybe kill you, maybe even kill you, oftentimes he will look for a Judas or he'll look for somebody that he can work through. Because don't think he doesn't know your flavor. Oh, the devil knows your flavor. And there's not a woman or a man in this room that doesn't know what, exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And when God wants to help you, bless you, elevate you, promote you, assist you, oftentimes he'll send you a God-sent person, a right relationship, a destiny relationship, hey, maybe even a kingdom connection. And when the devil wants to destroy you, when the devil wants to destroy you, he will often utilize, look for a person he can use. And so relationships are very important. Namely, having the discernment required to recognize right relationships. And what are right relationships? God-ordained or God-orchestrated relationships. Now, I'm not, I'm not really all for matchmaking, you know, but God is. <laughs> God is. The Lord knows how to put you together with the right person. And again, for marriage, but also partnerships. Also partnerships. Also, you know, every, uh, every Timothy needs a Paul. Every Elisha needs an Elijah. Elisha may never, he may never get to the fullness of his destiny without Elijah. Amen. Timothy may never be fully trained or activated into his assignment without a Paul. And Ruth might have never met that Boaz without Naomi. Relationships are important. And so the Lord is speaking to me about right relationships and wrong relationships and the critical nature of each you see, there is a time and a season for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1, 5, and 6. And I believe I'm in the King James for everything today, because I just liked it. It says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. 
a time to keep, a time to cast away. And I want you to apply all of that to relationships. The Lord is saying in this hour, at this very moment of global crisis, as he ministers to his beloved church, there, this is not a season to be entangled in a, in, or, or distracted by wrong relationships. There is a call of God on your life. There is a blueprint and a very beautiful plan for your life. We need you here, and we need you strong. We need you focused. We need you content in your spirit. Amen. Not sleeping with the enemy. Can I say it like that? I just did. We need you in right relationships. Amen. You know, when the Lord chose the people who would be here on the planet in these end times, he could have put anybody here. And he put you. He put you here on purpose. Now, if you talk to any coach in, in, in athletics who is honest, he will tell you. You always put in your best players in the last quarter. You save the best for last. Why? Because the strongest players, the MVPs, they're the ones who are going to push that thing over the finish line. They're the ones who are going to get the winning touchdown. They're the ones who are going to get the winning home run. God sees you as that MVP. Now that is why you are here in the end times. You have greater potential than you even know. You have greater anointing than you can even comprehend. And I promise you, I promise you, as big as you dream, it's still not even close to what God has planned for you. I got to talk to you today about your relationships. I got to talk to you today about relationships. And I'll tell you something. The more anointed you are, the more next level relationships God has for you, and the more counterfeit relationships the devil will try to send you as well. Again, this is for marriage, this is for business, this is for opportunities, this is for ministry, all of that. All of that. This is a season to purge and prepare, to release that you may receive. For look, the Lord said, soon I will introduce new people into the lives of my people who are positioned to receive. You can't receive something new if your hands are full of something old that God's been trying to remove out of your hands for so long and you, he's clinging to it. No, he just won't let go. But you can't receive something new because your hands are just, you're, you're clawing at that old thing. Amen. The Lord said, I desire to send you and bless you with the right people for the right person in the right season, he said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He's got your best interest at heart. He only wants to see you do well. Can't say that about certain people. Am I right about that? But God only wants to see you do well and to reach your highest potential. What a word. <laughs> I mean, really, already, what a word. So indeed, we know the right people can help you, the right people will support you, the right people will inspire you, the right people will challenge you to go higher, not hold you back, not get jealous if you start going a little too high. They're not going to be jealous of the dreams that you have. They're not going to be intimidated by the size of your destiny or the size of your vision. They're the right people. They're not intimidated or jealous. They want to help you. They want to motivate you. Amen. Now, a right relationship will also check you, though, when you need to be checked. Amen. But not with a motive. Not with their own motive. For, because they actually care about you. Amen. And they'll motivate you. They'll comfort you. They'll honor your destiny on and on. God-ordained relationships are often also purposeful. Sometimes you find you have a, a shared purpose or a shared destiny. Amen. They often fulfill the desire of your heart, but they always fulfill a need that you have. Amen. Did you catch that? Often 
an ordained relationship will fulfill the desire of your heart often, but they will always fulfill a need that you have. You write that down. God-ordained relationships may seem challenging at times, but that's only because they require a higher version of you. God-ordained relationships are always going to require for you to be a higher, better version of you. Amen. It's a next-level relationship. You've got to be next level. You've got to come up, amen, into that thing. Praise the Lord. So it's going to challenge you to go higher. It's going to challenge you to be better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Praise the, praise the Lord. They require more of you, but they also deposit and impart more to you. <laughs> so they may require more of you, but they're going to deposit and impart more to you than anything you've had in the past. Amen. Somebody say amen. God began speaking to me in depth about his servant, King David, and how much there is to learn from King David. He's, he's literally on my list of top three people I want to meet in heaven. Amen. Who's number one? I need to go straight to Elisha. I need to talk with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, Jesus, of course. Then it would be Elisha. Then, he, then it's going to be David for me. Amen. Deborah, if I had to choose a fourth... I need to speak with, with, with Mrs. Deborah. She has a lot to, to teach me. Praise the Lord and all of us. But the Lord began speaking to me in depth about King David. So much to learn there. At a time when David was in a particularly difficult and demanding season, God sent Jonathan into David's life. Amen. David was going through hell in that particular season. Very demanding. Very difficult time. And the Lord answered that difficulty. He answered the demands on David with a friend, with a genuine friend. Amen. Now, having strained relationships with his brothers, and some Bible scholars believe even his father, David needed Jonathan in his life. Did you catch that? David had strained relationships with his brothers, some Bible scholars also think he had a strained relationship with his father. I 100% agree with that. You say, why? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because Jesse, David's father, had many sons. But only David was seen as disposable. Why would I say that? He was the one who was sent out to guard the sheep against lions and bears. Real lions. Real bears. But he wasn't strong enough to go to war, though. He didn't, he didn't have the build or the strength or the, or the you know, the, the build. He wasn't, he wasn't, you know, like a, a buff guy enough to be a soldier. But you can literally throw him to the lions. Now, what that man did was he, he gave that assignment to the son that was disposable. That's why David was out in the field while his brothers were in the house, while his brothers were doing more honorable things. And David had strained relationships. We have no idea what he went through mentally. We had no idea what he went through emotionally. But we do know, huh, we do know that David experienced those things. And he had those strained relationships. And he needed a Jonathan in his life because it was at a time when King Saul was no longer grateful to David. See, King Saul was initially grateful because David was able to solve the problem of Goliath. Now, you and I know the real, the real deal. It was David and his skill set with the rocks and the, and, the, and the rag and the slingshot, right? But it was the Lord's supernatural power and the anointing on his life. All those things together, that's what brought Goliath down. And initially, Saul was grateful. And then that, that evaporated. And it turned right into jealousy. King Saul, David's predecessor, was at first grateful for David's success in war, but then quickly became intimidated and resentful of David to the point of opening himself up to demon possession. You got to be careful with that. You know why they call it a green-eyed monster, jealousy? Yeah, exactly. 
Isn't it funny how these, these so-called sayings are actually true when you really break it down? They call jealousy a green-eyed monster because it does open you up to demonic influence. How many people have become jealous and then it just grows and grows and they do horrible things because of the jealousy? We've all heard stories about that. I feel like a light bulb is going out for a lot of people. Yeah, the green-eyed monster. And Saul had it. He became demonically possessed, and he was intent to murder David. He, w- he was set on it. I'm going to kill this kid. David needed a, a Jonathan. He needed a, a, a friend he could trust, someone who could help him. Can you imagine how you feel in that position? Can you imagine? How, how, is it, are you even able to sleep? You're watching your back at all times, night and day? And the position of a leader is not always easy to occupy. You know, after solving the Goliath issue, David is, you know, he's, he's put in a position where he's, he's you know, uh, he's, he's got a strong position among the warriors. And he's a leader. And that's not easy in itself. That in itself is not easy. Being a leader. There's the old adage that is connected with that. You know, it's lonely at the top. Well, it must have been incredibly lonely for David. Having nobody he could relate to. Right? It's not like he can text his family. Didn't have cell phones. Text them about what anyway? Talk to them about what anyway? They're the ones who are just like, He's got the strange, strained relationships with them. So he's really going through it. And some of you are really relating to this right now. You can really relate it, relate to this. And they say it's lonely at the top. People can seek, when you're a leader, people can seek relationship with you for underlying purposes or wrong motives. And then there are always the wolves who seek to destroy you because they want what you have. And this is normal for anybody in leadership. If you, and if you are, you already know. You're, you're nodding your head right now. Yep, that's the truth. That's the truth. So I'll say it again. David needed Jonathan in his life. He needed a friend. He needed somebody he could trust. He needed so, someone who knew, who David knew was on his side. If you have ever been alone, if you have ever been in a corner, if you have ever been just so much going on in your life and you are so weighed down by so, you just need to know, is there anybody who's on my side who I can actually count on and they don't have a motive and I don't have to worry about if I can even turn my back on them? The Bible said in 1 Samuel 18 verse 1, These two men shared a rare and beautiful spiritual bond because the Lord knit their souls together. Amen. If you've ever had a real BFF, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. And in Proverbs 17, verse 17, the word of God says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Amen. A real friend loves you at all times, not just when, you know, the money's flowing and everything's good, not just, you know, when you're going to go take rides together and you, you know, let's go eat, I'll buy it. No, no, at all times, at all times. That's a real friend. Amen. It's not about just what you can do for them, but it's a reciprocal relationship. They love at all times, in times of plenty, in times of struggle, in times of celebration, in times of we're still going through it. Amen. A friend loveth at all times, but a brother is born for adversity. Man, that is, that is a brother. That is a sister. They're so close. You're so close. The bond is so deep. It's a supernatural thing. It's a spiritual thing. You feel like God has knit your souls together. And when you are going through adversity, you know that you you got a prayer partner there. you got a prayer warrior that they know how to pray for you. When you are going through so much, you you can't even pray for yourself. Or you are dealing with something that you just need somebody who can really pray and have your back. That type of friend is born for adversity.
that's what Jonathan had with David. And that's what David had with Jonathan. Later, David would taste the bitterness and personal destruction that comes with the wrong relationships. Jonathan was a beautiful right relationship. God himself knit their souls together and created the closeness. Somebody here needs to get ready. God is about to knit your soul together with somebody. And you are going to have an immediate closeness that is so different that you know it is supernatural. This is the word of the Lord to you. It is your confirmation. It's a prophetic word. Receive and you will testify in Jesus' name. He's going to knit your souls together. He's going to knit your souls together. It won't be one-sided. It'll be reciprocal, two-sided, both sides. You both feel it. You're both in it. It's, it's, it's mutual. Amen. Say amen if you receive it. If you receive that, say amen. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, thank you, Jesus. And that was a God-ordained relationship. That was a right relationship. And later, it would go south. It would all go down for David. And he would taste the bitterness and the destruction that comes from the wrong relationships. Some Bible scholars believe that David's wife, Michal, resented him because their marriage lacked closeness and intimacy. If that's going to be too personal for you, you can click off right now. We're going, in, we're going here. We're, we're going here. A lot of Bible scholars... A lot of uh, ministers believe that. I, I'm one, 100%. I'm a woman. I know women. Amen. They believe that she resented him, and she did too. She could She actually, she had no love for David. His wife. And the idea is that was rooted in the fact that their marriage lacked closeness and intimacy. And where's the proof? Well, we've got some things that we can say are the proof, or, or at the very least, point to that. Let's talk about in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16, how Michal openly disdained David in front of other people, openly dissed him. He's, I mean, just openly dissed him openly expressed her disgust at him. It says this in 2 Samuel 6, 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, remember that, remember that? She was the king's daughter. Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. I hate that. I hate him. I despise him. My God, I can't stand him. That's his wife. And this begs the question, is this clear fracture in the marriage the reason why David was so easily tempted by Bathsheba? Because he knew that his wife despised him? I mean, listen, we got we to gotta just digest this for just a moment. Allow me to just unpack it. David's wife despised him in her heart when she saw him dancing and worshiping with abandon. So what is their day-to-day -day commu communication like? What is their nighttime, bedtime like? Nothing good. Nothing good. There's a rift in the marriage. She despises him. There's a fracture in that marriage. And I would submit to you, is this possible that that was the root of why he was so easily? I'm not, I'm not making excuses for anybody's behavior. I'm just opening the scriptures. Because that man was easily tempted by Bathsheba. And he loved the Lord. And he had a fear of the Lord. Amen. But there was a lot of disconnect. And there was a lot of open disgust and disdainment. He was a carnal man. He turned out to be a carnal man. So had that man, had David been a pot that
that was ready to boil over at any moment? Was Michal a woman who was unfulfilled, resentful, empty, trapped in a marriage she never chose? Oh, listen, recall, recall, and just flow with me here for a minute. Let's just recall. They never, they didn't get married because they wanted to. They, they didn't get married because they loved each other. Sugar, they never even dated. They never courted. He never proposed to her. She never fell in love with him. Went to her father, the king. Oh, Daddy, I really love David. Do you? No, that's not the way it went. She was a prize. That he, she was part of the prize package that he won for killing Goliath. She had no choice in the matter. And it's not like he chose her. We don't even know how they actually felt about each other. <laughs> I'm just putting these things out there for your consideration because we need to look at what happens when you are in the wrong relationship. Amen. And here we learn, hallelujah, the critical nature of allowing God to choose your spouse. This is very interesting to me, and I wonder, would it have been possible for Michal and David to go before the Lord together and ask him together, as a married couple in agreement, to go to the Lord together and ask him, Father, Lord, please heal our marriage, bless our marriage, bring us together, probably not possible at all. Because when she saw him worshiping and praising the Lord, she hated him. She didn't have the same passion for the Lord that he did. Well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, apparently, because if you recall, her father Saul, in order to be prepared to even be king in the first place, he had to be sent among the prophets to learn how to worship, to learn how to prophesy. Yeah. That didn't come to him naturally by impartation or spiritual growth because he was pursuing the Lord. God had to send him to the prophets to be changed into another man. And the change did not stick. He changed back. Well, well, well. Apparently the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Because when that, that man's daughter saw David worshiping, she despised him in her heart. So they didn't have the same love for God. If you have never been in a marriage where you worship together, you can't even comprehend what it's like to be in a marriage that you don't worship together. If you have never been in a marriage where you don't both love the Lord with your whole heart and your whole mind and your whole soul, then you can't comprehend what kind of a disconnect that is. I mean, you don't even have the same viewpoint on life. You're not even headed in the same direction. I'm not making excuses for anybody. I'm opening the scriptures and showing you some of the reality of this relationship, this marriage between King David and Michal. So David learned the critical importance of trusting God for right relationships in his moment of need, in his season of duress, in his difficult time, in that deadly season, David got a Jonathan. David got a Jonathan, a blessed relationship, a right relationship, a God-ordained relationship. Hallelujah. But David would also learn the critical effect of getting into the wrong relationship. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to go into this a little bit deeper. Everybody say, let's go. Come on, say, let's go. Somebody, I think John said, let's go. <laughs> Amen. I love that. <laughs> God bless John. He's trying to make up for that little hair faux pas. We won't talk about it. If you know, you know. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. In the spring, pay attention to this now. In the spring, at the time when kings go to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army, and they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked, on, walked around on the roof of the palace. First of all, who even does that? From the, from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. 
The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. Well, what is she doing up on the roof? Bathing. I mean, the whole thing is just like a, 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 a satanic, sordid setup, if you know what I'm saying. Please don't ever doubt that the devil will set you up with temptation. He knows what you are going through, and he knows your flavor. He knows what you need to see, and he will put you in the wrong place at the right time to mess you up. Oh, he just happens to be on the roof, and she just happens to be there. No, that was a satanic setup. You've got to be led by the Lord. You've got to be led by the Lord. And the man said, she's Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And that, my friends, began a season of scandal, crime, destruction, death, and pain for David. For David. But I want you to see something. I want you to note that David entered into that horrible, horrible season of scandal and loss and pain because he didn't go where he was supposed to go when he was supposed to be there. It all started when he did not go where he was supposed to go in the spring, in the season, when kings go to war. I want you to see that. If David had been where he was supposed to be, it never would have happened. If David had been obedient to what he knew he was supposed to be doing, it would have never happened. The temptation occurred during the season when he wasn't even supposed to be there. So it wasn't even that he was on the roof and she was on the roof. That's a satanic setup right there. But David wasn't even supposed to be home. The whole thing began because David wasn't where he was supposed to be. I'm trying to tell you, the devil will order your steps too. He will mess you up by causing you to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But obedience to the Lord is protection. That's why I always say your obedience is a protection. Your obedience protects you. Amen. Had David been doing what he was supposed to do, the whole incident with Bathsheba would not have happened. And in the end, in the end, in the end, David, oh, he lost so much. He lost so much. He lost all sense of reason <laughs> due to his lust for Bathsheba. And that led to the murder of her husband and a hard rebuke for him through the prophet Nathan. And ultimately, it led to the death of the child David and Bathsheba bore together. Friends, we have got to learn. God-ordained relationships are the only way. It's the, I, don't want, I don't want to hear it anymore. I, I don't want to, I don't, I, you, it would shock you how many people ask us to pray for, you know, relationships that are very clearly not God-ordained. I can't pray for a relationship that God hasn't ordained for you. I can only pray God's best for you. Amen. Amen. I can only pray, and I will only, I will only pray that God puts the person and the people in your life that are for you, that he says are for you. I will not underwrite years of pain for you. I won't do it. I care enough about you to not do it. I will not authorize or be any level of assistance in you entering into something that God says, okay, because my prophet prayed and they want it and they got free will and now you're going to be in a season of loss, scandal, pain, destruction. No, the devil is a liar. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. God-ordained relationships, it's the only way to go. It's the only, some of you know what I'm talking about already. You do, yes you do. Yes you do. Because you have already experienced having to recover from a relationship that you now know God never ordained it. And some of you 
Now, now, you're now faced with another problem altogether. How do I get out of this thing now? Because I now know that God never chose this for me. My flesh took me into it. So now you have to try to disentangle yourself from a mess, from a noose around your neck. God-ordained relationships are the only way to go. We're in the season where Israel is at war. We're in the season where these people are trying to bring about a world war. We are in the season that God has said, in the midst of all that, watch what I do. We are going to fulfill Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. God is pouring out his... I hope you understand that's why all this is even happening. God is pouring out his spirit at a greater measure, Acts 2, 17 and 18. And we are rising and we are increasing in the name of Jesus. And you cannot afford... To, to, to allow the devil to tempt you through your flesh into the wrong thing or cause you to walk away from the right thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting little twist. You've got to be spirit-led. You've, you've got to be spirit-led. You've got to be led of the Lord. And that can only happen for you. If you, if you allow yourself to be, if you draw close to God, and then he draws close to you, and then, amen, then you are able to resist the devil because you have the power of God, amen, and you are drawing close to him, and he is drawing close to you, and then, then when he leads you and he confirms things to you, you're clear, you know you hear God, amen, and you move in the right direction. But you know what I have found? People, you can get mad if you want to, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. People who make the same mistakes over and over, they're not close to God. They're following from a distance. Maybe. They're not close to the Lord. They're making decisions in their flesh. That's why the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 17 verse 9 said, the heart is treacherous. The heart is treacherous. Isn't it funny how there's a saying in the world, and it's very popular, where they actually say, it's so, it's so crazy, it's backwards, man, it's messed up, but they actually say, you know, follow your heart, your heart knows best! Your heart knows best, follow your heart! Yeah, follow your heart straight to hell. Follow your heart straight to destruction. Follow your heart straight to the wrong relationship. Follow your heart, follow your heart right to make the wrong decision about your career. Follow your heart right to, to make the wrong decision about, you know, who you're going to date, what you're going to get into, what, what you're going to pursue, the job you're going to... You can't follow your heart. you got to follow Jesus. Jesus is the only one who knows the plan for your life, who knows the blueprint for your life. He knows the plans he has for you, and they are good plans. Amen. You have got to follow Jesus. You've got to follow Jesus because he's the one who said, let me tell you, I'm tell you right up front, mince no words, and here's what it is. Are you ready? The devil has a three-part agenda. That's it. He, that's it. Steal, kill, destroy. But I have come that you may have life more abundantly. What is that? What is it? No, thank you. I'm good. Trying to give me, trying to give me notes. Do you remember my dream last night about the notes? That's wild. We got to talk about that afterward. A little prophetic, little connection there. Wow. Interesting. You didn't even realize what you were doing when you just did that. Okay. So. The, I know I have no idea. This is a time of massive prophetic alignment and acceleration. I prophesied that to whoever can receive it. And because, you better listen to me too, you two over there. Because this is a time of very powerful prophetic alignment and acceleration, God wants to accelerate you to where you need to be, to who you need to be with, to, to, to what you need to do, to your destiny. Amen. 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 Receive that. Praise the Lord. And so it only makes sense that if God is going to accelerate you into blessing, don't think the devil's not going to try to mess you up or mess with you. Of course he will. Okay? So you've got to be wise and you have to have discernment, but discernment is from the Holy Ghost. And you only receive that by getting close to the Lord, by getting close to the Lord. But this whole thing with David would have never happened if he was where he was supposed to be if he was being obedient to the Lord. 
and there is somebody here that you need to be obedient to the Lord. There are some places that you don't need to go. There are some things that you do not need to do anymore. There are some things that you know are not for you. You need to go where you are supposed to be and do what you know you are supposed to do in the name of Jesus. And that's your confirmation in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have to learn. The Lord spoke to me very clearly about this matter that there is a time and a season for everything. This is your season to examine your relationships. This is your season to prepare for new and greater relationships. This is your season, watch me now, to go even to another level in your existing relationships. Amen. There are people in your life that they are God sent. It is God arranged. Amen. God has another level for you. He has another level for you. Amen. I prophesy to whoever can receive that. Amen. And you will testify in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Yes. Yes, he's going to take you higher together. He's going to take you to another level together. Amen. You haven't seen all there is to see yet. There's, there is greater coming, says the Lord. There is greater coming, says the Lord. Amen. This is our season to examine relationships. This is our season to examine the condition and position of our heart. How's your heart? How's your heart? How many can admit that our heart has led us, led us into some pretty sticky situations, some even painful situations that we later regretted? Have you ever followed your heart into a relationship where you gave it your all? Perhaps really believed that it could work, but then you ended up heartbroken because it ended, or you ended up frustrated because you realized, I have been investing my time in the wrong person, in the wrong place, and now I have to try to disentangle myself. Who here has ever trusted someone who seemed to be a good person only later to find out their heart was cold and capable of doing bad things? Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. You love them, and then you found out they are capable of bad, cold things that you could never do. And again, that is exactly why the prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 19, verse, or Jeremiah 17, verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? And let's look at what the Lord said through wise King Solomon. He said, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And then, of course, we know in the Word of God, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can tell what's in somebody's heart by what they talk about. You can tell what's in somebody's heart by, by their conversation. You can tell what is in somebody's heart by the thing they talk about the most, by the thing that they, when they initiate a conversation... Or when they just, they come with you and they, they, they just introduce a topic or they introduce a thought. What they're talking about, what comes out of their mouth, reveals what is in their heart. And that's why it's important to the Lord to listen to what we say. Oh, you, you're not ready for that conversation? We're going to have it anyway. In the book of Malachi 3, the book of Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through 18 to be specific, the Bible reveals that God listens to what we say when we talk to each other. <laughs> and, and then he, he, he writes your name in a book of remembrance. If you have been talking about the Lord and meditating on his name and meditating on his goodness and meditating on things of God, how's your heart? How's your conversations? What's, what's in your heart? What, what are the topics of your conversations? It's revealing who you really are and what you really care about. And I'm not trying to make you nervous. And some of you are already very, some of you are more nervous than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rockers. 
don't know why that cracks me up. Come on, it's a funny visual. Long tail, opposite of the bob, opposite of bob tail, no, okay. Opposite of bob tail, it's a long tail, rock, no, okay. Don't be nervous, but God is listening to what you talk about. Kingdom people talk about kingdom things. People of destiny talk about destiny things. People of Jesus meditate on the word of God, the Bible, the plan of God, the goodness of God, the holiness of God, God things. People of prayer pray. Hallelujah. Worshippers worship. And God listens to what comes out of our mouths because it reveals what's in our heart. Yeah. Yep. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's a rough one today, but God's going to get somebody right. Praise the Lord. He's got, he's got, listen to me now. Don't talk, don't be a talker backer. God's got good plans for you. He wants to take you higher in this season. He has beautiful things planned for you. This is a loving word. This is an on-time word. Amen. You're not going to miss your moments. Not on my watch, sugar. You're not going to miss your moment. You're not going to miss God's best. And you're surely not going to stay in that relationship down there. God has a next-level relationship for you in the name of Jesus. The season we are in requires... Look around at the world. Just look around. Look, look around at the world. The season we are in requires for our heart to be tuned to the voice of the Lord and the will of the Lord. Because as the world is in obvious darkness, deception, and upheaval, this is just no time to be distracted by things of the flesh, the desires of the heart. Amen. By what the heart wants or what the heart is trying to lead you into doing. And the devil will use those things. He will use the desires of your flesh to de deter or distract you, even to try to destroy you. But right now, you know what? You know what I feel like doing? I pray against unholy relationships right now. I pray against unholy relationships right now. I pray every single soul tie, every unholy, ungodly soul tie, I pray it breaks in the name of Jesus. I pray you are free, and who the Son sets free is free indeed. But on the other hand, you know what I also pray? And I do it prophetically. I pray God knits you together with the right people. I pray God puts you in the right place at the right time to meet your person and meet your people. I pray the Lord sends ordained people into your life, and you go to another level. Amen. In marriage, in ministry, in vision, in in destiny, in your money, in your finance, in your family, in the name of Jesus, God has relationships for you that are next level, and this is your season to receive them and to begin to access them. Amen. You're not going to go backward. You're not. You're not. You're going forward. You're not going to go down. You're not. You're going to go upwards in the name of Jesus. You're coming up higher. God has next, re next level relationships for you in the name of Jesus. I pray against unholy, unholy, ungodly soul ties. Because there's two kinds, you know. Yes, there are. there are. There's the godly soul tie where the Lord knits together the souls of people. Amen. Like David and Jonathan. Like Ruth and Boaz. We'll get there in a moment. Amen. And then there's ungodly ones that the devil puts together. Amen. Every demonically induced relationship, every demonically seduced relationship must break now in the fierce and formidable name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It shall not stand, it shall not continue in the name of Jesus. And as Mo Moses told Pharaoh, so too I raise my voice and declare today, let the Lord's people go in the name of Jesus. I command unholy soul ties to break in Jesus' name, and that demonic assignment, they will let God's people go in the name of Jesus Christ. And within 30 days, we're going to see some fruit from that prophetic word. 30 days. Amen. Praise the Lord. For the Lord would say to the person listening now, 
In this season, I am seeking to shield and guide my people, just as I did the children of Israel. As they navigated the desert, so too will I now navigate you through your desert to your promised land, your promised place, your promised relationships. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will do this for your blessing, and he's also going to do it for his glory. In Jesus' name. And the Spirit of God would say at this time, Satan, the adversary, seeks to entangle you in destructive, unholy, unrighteous relationships. At first they will seduce you, but in the end they will only reduce you. At first you, you, you might feel that God is being too strict, but then soon you will see that it only restricts you. And now God says like a python, these people will try to snake into your heart and they will seek to, to, to kill you, to suffocate you. But God sent his son that you might have everlasting life in heaven and life more abundantly on earth and life to the full, even life more abundantly. And you must choose life to day. Oh, that you would choose life. Amen. For the Lord says, I know the desires of your heart, and I know who is for you and who is correct for you. And the Lord would say, there's a time and a season for everything. Do not allow any barrenness that you feel in this season to distract you or make you vulnerable to the desires of lust. Remain holy. Remain patient, for your season will come. Come on, Ruth. Your season will come. David, snap out of it. Snap Snap out of it. It ain't worth it. She ain't worth it, David. Snap out of it. Your time will come. Your season will come. And do not allow yourself to be tempted. I prophesy the God sends are coming. Next level relationships are coming. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy it will be soon. Sooner than you think, the God sends are coming. The ones that God has chosen and prepared for your life, hallelujah. These are the ones that will add to you and they will edify you. They are the ones that you will grow with and you will sow with and you will serve with and you will increase with them and you will rise in the name of Jesus. And as Ruth settled her heart to trust the Lord, Oh, make the connection with me. Come on, flow with me in this direction now. As Ruth settled her heart to trust the Lord at a period in her life where she was just in a miserable, 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 horrifying time. Honey, her husband had just been killed. She got that, that knock on the door. He's not coming back. There was a famine in the land. Not, not that the, the store didn't have everything she wanted. Not that there were some delays in the supply chain. Oh, no, no, no. There was no food. No food. No food. A famine, a real famine. And she's grieving. Her husband is dead. And she has no children. So it's not like she can even comfort herself with the children that she has. The Bible scholars put Ruth in her 40s. Now, we know that's old. 40 is the new 20. We understand that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just thank God for good skin care, if you know what I'm saying here, ladies. But in Bible times, it's pretty major. Pretty major. She didn't have a job. She didn't have money. She had no savings. She didn't have a cash app or anybody to send her a few bucks. Nothing, 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 nothing. No plan. No plan. She had come out of the occult. She had come out of Moab. She couldn't go back home. She's not like them anymore. And in a moment that would, that would prove to be highly strategic in her life, she made the correct decision. I'm trying to tell you, decisions decide your destiny. I'm talking to somebody right now. You are about to come to a strategic moment. Oh, that you would make the right decision because decisions decide destiny. Here it is, the moment. Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, says, I'm out. This is not working out here. And I just got word that there is food in my hometown and, the, and things are better there. I, I'm going. I'm out. I'm going home. I'm, 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 I'm going. 
And she's got two daughters-in-law, two of them. There's Ruth, and here's the other one, Orpah. And Orpah says, Ruth, Naomi, it's great knowing you girls. We had a good run together. I'm out. And she does go back to Moab. She goes back to Moab. After she has learned of the Lord, after she has been taught about God, the true God, how in the name of all that is good and holy do you go back to your pagan gods after knowing the Lord? Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to go back to the astrology? What are you doing? Are you going to go back to the Hindu gods? Go back to yoga class? Is that what you're going to do? What, what, are, you, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to start reading tarot cards again? Okay, Orpa. All right, Orpa. And biblical history tells what happened to her. Nothing good. I'm not going to go into it right now. I won't. Nothing good. Her life was ruined by that decision. Ruined. 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 In that same moment, which was a crucible, make no mistake about it, it was a crucible. It was a moment that was strategic because everything hung in the balance. For Ruth, she'd go one way or another way. Ultimately, her decision rested upon one thing. There was her faith in God and her character. And her character only came to her and only was what it was because of her faith in God. Do you know that when you are strong in the Lord and the power of his might, when you love the Lord, when you pursue the Lord, when you honor the Lord, when you revere the Lord and his statutes and his commands, it changes you. That's why the Bible says that you become transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the more time you spend in his presence, you are transformed. And she was no longer who she used to be. And she didn't look like or sound like the people she had come out of. She didn't look like her people of origin. She didn't sound like her people of origin. She no longer behaved like them anymore because of her faith. So now she had character. Now she had integrity. Now she had loyalty. Amen. Hallelujah. And when Orpah was saying goodbye, Ruth said, I am not leaving you, Naomi. I'm not going anywhere. I will go where you go. Your land will be my land. Your people will be my people, and your God is my God. And she went with Naomi. And very soon, she met her husband. Very soon, she met the man that God had ordained to be her husband. So here we have David who did not go where he should have gone and got in trouble. And here we have Ruth who went where she needed to go and she, got, she walked right into destiny. I just want to take a moment to mention that Boaz was an amazingly eligible bachelor and sought after. He was the community's most sought after eligible bachelor because he was a man of means. He was a very successful businessman. He was incredibly uh, uh, respected in the community. He was an older man, a little salt and pepper, if you know what I'm saying, right? And he was sought after, and Ruth walked right into it. And what's fascinating, what is fascinating to me, and we see this play out over and over in the Bible. The night before Ruth made that decision to go to Bethlehem with Naomi, who knows if she could even sleep that night because she was going through so much horrible stuff. She was going through hell and high water. Her life was a mess. Her, she was broken. She was broken. And she had no idea that God had a plan. She had no idea that God had already chosen her husband. She had no idea that marrying that man would change her level overnight. She had no idea that her God-ordained marriage would make her first lady of a community, co-owner of a very thriving, wealthy business, and put her in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. She had no idea. That's why I like to say it, and I say it often, because I gotta remind you, the day before your biggest breakthrough feels like any other day. 
The night before your biggest promotion feels like any other night. And it might be the deepest, darkest, most painful night of your life. But little do you know, bam, God's already got the plan to change it all around for you. Amen. But that God-ordained relationship that changed Ruth's life would have never happened. It would have never happened if Ruth did not make the decision in that moment, in the crucible, to act as a woman of faith in the Lord. A woman of faith in the Lord. Going in the direction that God leads you in will never harm you. It will only bless you. Amen. Amen. So as Ruth settled her heart to trust in the Lord, so we must do so in this hour and at all times. Ruth declared out of her mouth, as many of you are going to declare out of your mouth in today, on today, because I want to lead you in a prayer. Amen. And as she declared that she would trust in her God, and she, watch this, and she would trust in her God-given leadership. Well, who's that? Naomi. That was her mother-in-law and her spiritual mother. <laughs> What? You didn't see that before? Yeah. Naomi was her mother-in-law and her spiritual leader, her spiritual mother. So if Ruth had not made the, the, the life-changing decision to honor Naomi and to follow her leadership, we might not even be talking about her today. Decisions determine your destiny. Amen. I sense very strong in my heart. There are Many people, actually it's many, it's many people, that you are in a crucible as well. That you are aware, you are aware that things are hanging in the balance for you. And I want to pray with you right now. Say this out of your mouth, repeat after me, I want you to say this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, oh King Jesus, connect me with the right people for my life. I cannot descend into obscurity. I cannot descend into death prematurely. I cannot live at a level that I was never ordained or destined to. Help me to rise into my God-ordained next level relationships. Connect me to the people that are right for me, Jesus. I allow myself to be led by you. I will obey you. When I hear your voice giving me an instruction, Jesus, I will obey you. I will obey you because I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Pastor Eduardo, there's no other way to say this. I'm going to have to just tell him like it is. <laughs> Get ready. Because some of you are going to find yourself in a moment of test very soon. It's, you, and it's, you remember this word. You're going to say, I think I'm in a Ruth and Orpah moment. Correct. Correct. And you will be very aware that things are hanging in the balance. Amen. You can go one way or another way. Now, this is going to be for people concerning relationships and marriage. Relationships that lead to marriage. Let me say it that way. Relationships that lead to marriage. It'll be in business. It will be in ministry. It will be in your calling. Yes, it will. It will be concerning even the redemption of family members. Yes, it will. Praise the Lord. That is the word of the Lord to you in the name of Jesus for his glory. For his glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just sense God is going to disentangle some people, and he's also going to connect some people as well. During the enforced global lockdowns of 2020, 2021, part of 22, they sought to confine us. But in this season, God shall refine us. The Lord would have us to examine our hearts and trust him like never before. The Lord would have us to lay down desires and focus on the one who grants the desires of our heart. Did you catch that part? When you lay down your desires in favor of focusing on him, 
That's what he gives you the desires of your hearts. Hallelujah. Catch that. Now that's a word. You need to receive that in Jesus' name, amen. Because I prophesy the God sons are coming. I said the God sons are coming in the name of Jesus. People who will love you and see you and honor you and support you and cheer you on to go higher in the name of Jesus. Because on the other side of your right decision is destiny. 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 The things that God has destined for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And destiny is calling somebody. I'm going to make this official. Now, I understand that it's pretty much warm weather all the time in Florida. But where some of you are, it's no longer real warm yet. I see the warm weather coming, and at that time, I see chance meetings. And it'll be warmer in Florida, amen. There'll be, when it's warm everywhere else, it'll be hot here, amen. And I see chance meetings at that time in the name of Jesus. On common locations, for the Lord will order your steps and have you be right where you need to be to meet somebody that you need to meet. Glory to God. And I do see many anointed couples with Holy Ghost fire and, and tongues of, of flames hovering over their heads. And that is the Lord anointing you, amen, for kingdom relationship. Kingdom purpose, kingdom destiny, amen. And your family will be anointed and your home will be anointed, amen. And you will be as a shining light in the darkness of this current world. It's beautiful. Do you see how beautiful that is? It's the plan of God. Don't tell me this is not an on-time word. Don't tell me, don't tell me, I'm talking about things, I'm talking about relationships, about big things happening in the world. Don't tell me it's not important, it is. It is. This is a time when the people of God need to be visible and occupied. And he wants you living your best life according to destiny, amen, so that you can fulfill your assignment, amen, and be a good witness as to who our God is. Do you see it? Do you see the importance of getting in the plan of God for such a time as this? Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord said this about the, the families and the couples anointed that are going to have the, the tongues of flame hovering over their heads. Here's what he said. He said they are grasping hands and standing side by side with other couples. And some of them will be put on the front lines. So there is an industry, there is a region, there is an assignment that one or both of them will have in a very public way for such a time as this. Amen. God said, I'm building wonder teams. It's incredible to me. I'm building wonder families. I will anoint them and raise them up for my purposes. Receive in Jesus' name. And if you know this is for you, say a big loud amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let it be unto those who are ready, O God, and let it come rapidly and speedily. Even so, let it come rapidly and speedily in the name of of Jesus. Let there be an acceleration on destiny. Let there be an acceleration on what God has for you in this season in the name of Jesus because the God sends are coming. And just as the Lord led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he's getting ready to lead some of you out of the bondage of the wrong relationships, even the wrong places. Amen. A lot of people talking about Goshen these days. I'm not going to Goshen. You can go to Goshen. God, God, God's not leading any of his people to Goshen. Don't, don't, try, don't try that goofy stuff here. Oh, you, oh, you want to go to Goshen? Where you have to work, for, for work yourself to almost die and never be paid? <laughs> where people are allowed to legally beat you? Where you're not allowed to own property or real estate? You don't get paid? No, I'm not going to Goshen. God is, and, and, God's, and the people of God who understand what I'm saying, you're not going either. You will go to the promised land. You will inherit. You will occupy. You will inherit the land. You will occupy the land. You will occupy spheres of influence. You will occupy spheres of impact in your industry, in your destiny, in your purpose. And many of you will do it alongside your God-ordained relationships. Not just marriages, although it's going to be a lot of marriages. Amen. Amen. But also relationships that are strategic for your destiny. It's coming, and it will bless you in the name of Jesus.
Permit me to pray over you, and I'm going to release you. Lift your hands and close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this on-time word. I thank you for talking to us, Father, in a language that is clear and plain. But I thank you for the strong anointing, O oh God. I thank you that there is going to be rapid, rapid, rapid results. Rapid results on this prophetic word. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the God-sent relationships that are coming. I thank you for the next level connections strategic that are coming in the name of Jesus. I speak strength over everyone listening now. I speak wisdom and tenacity to see and discern and know and do correctly in Jesus' mighty name. If there's anybody here who has never given your life to Jesus, or maybe, you know, maybe you did, but then you got, you just, you know, you got, of course, you know what happens. You got into sin, you got off the wagon, you got into wrong stuff, you got with the wrong people. It's time to get right with the Lord right now. You're not waiting. You've got no time to waste. You're not going to play games. You can't play games. You're not a toy. And your life is not a, a, a game. And this is not child's play. God has a plan for you. He's got good things for you. And it's time for you to elevate. And this is your word and your confirmation. Amen. And you got to be sure you're going to heaven, honey. Hell is a very real place with zero exit doors. But heaven is a very real place too. And this life more abundantly in the earth until Jesus comes is a very real thing. Amen. I want to pray with you right now, and you, 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 got, you, 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 you got to do it now. Like, you can't wait on this. You can't hesitate on this because you, you, you... The time is now. I can't do it for you, but I will do it with you. You got to say this out loud. Let the Lord know that you mean business. Amen. Say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. You are my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God, and now you are my Savior and my Lord. From today, I repent of all sin, and I will follow you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Take me over. Make me over. I love you, Jesus and I will follow you. Amen. All right. Welcome, or welcome back to the family of God. Stay close to this ministry, whatever you do. Amen. You will grow here. You will grow here. If you missed the praise reports at the very beginning, rewind, go back and watch. You will grow in this ministry. Praise the Lord. Uh, beginning Mother's Day weekend, we have regular services live here in church. Amen. So you can go to my website and get all that information. Make your plans to be here. Praise the Lord. I would love to greet you uh, in the sanctuary of the Lord here at our beautiful new House of Glory Church in St. Petersburg. Amen. You do have to reserve your seat online. I mean, of course, it's always going to be free to come, but we are limited for space, so seats have to be reserved. Amen. If this word really spoke to you and you're like, wow, I, I, uh, whew, that, that was a doozy, and you feel like you need some prayer, or if you are simply wanting us to pray with you because you are ready, you are ready to receive your next level relationships, and you want us to pray the prayer of agreement with you, you want us to agree with you, amen, in the name of Jesus, in the spirit that God is doing this for you. We are blessed and honored to agree in prayer with you. You can do prayer hand emojis like this in the comments, or you can send us a confidential prayer request, amen. But I want you to just understand something. Your prayer request will very quickly become a praise report in this ministry, amen. So, so just understand that because prayer changes things. Amen. And we will pray for you. We will stand with you. We love you. And we look forward to hearing all about what God is going to do in your life. I want everybody to get a relationship seed in your hand. I'm not going to give you any kind of a, a point of contact for that or a number. It's just not what it is today. But a relationship seed. What are you believing for? Are you believing God to send you... Um, a, a business uh, relationship? Are you believing for God to send you uh, somebody who can promote you? Are, are you believing for God to give you favor for a new job or a promotion? Are you ready uh, to, to, to be a wife? Are you ready to be a husband? Amen. Are you tired 
of sleeping single in a double bed and you want to meet your God-ordained spouse? Are you ready to meet somebody strategically who can assist you to get you to where you need to be like a, like a Naomi was for Ruth? Amen. Get a relationship seed in your hand, wrap your faith around it, and put it in the ground. Amen. Release that seed with faith. Speak to your seed, amen, watering it with your prayer, with your faith, and have an expectation because the word of God says that when you give, it is given to you, but it doesn't come back the same way you released it. It comes back multiplied. That is the benevolence of God. He's not a stingy God. He says, it's going to come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He'll even cause people to come and be a blessing to you, amen. For those of you here who, you know, you see me as your spiritual covering, or possibly this is your church. I am your prophet. I am your spiritual mother. I am your, your spiritual leader. Get a prophet's reward seed in the ground. I want to encourage you to do that. I forgot who I was talking to the other day, but I actually, I, oh, I know who it was. I gave a prophetic word, and then I said, you know, and, and they received it. I said, you know, what you can do is you can put God in remembrance of what he said through the prophet. If you really believe that this is a word from the Lord and, and that my anointing is, is what it is, and listen to the praise reports at the beginning of this broadcast, amen. We're going to do more on Wednesday. Then, then tell the Lord, I received that prophetic word that was released in that service, amen. I put you in remembrance of what you told the prophet. I receive it, I claim it in Jesus' name, and get a Matthew 10, 41 seed in the ground. Wrap your seed around your declaration and believe God for big things, amen. Believe God to honor his word. Believe God to bring it to pass. He is not a man that he should lie. He just doesn't. He just doesn't. He just doesn't. Now, the only thing I will say is, if you do not understand seed time and harvest, then don't touch it. Don't play with the seed. Don't, don't play with the seed. But if you do understand it, this is something that I want to encourage you to engage in. Amen. I feel in my spirit that there are some here that you have never sown an honor seed. An honor seed begins at the $1,000 level. I can't, I can't say it any other way than this. I can remember the exact season in my life. I can even tell you whose ministry it was. But when I sowed my first $1,000 seed, I can't explain it, but there's something about that $1,000 seed. There just is. There's something about the $1,000 seed. It seems it, it's a breakthrough seed. It breaks the back of poverty. It breaks through opposition. It breaks through barriers. It just does. And there is biblical precedent for that. I could talk to you about the Solomonic offering where he didn't have to you know, do a, a thousand, but he did, amen. I could talk about the way Isaac sowed as well, where it didn't have to be lavish, but he did it. So, so some of you, I believe the Lord is speaking to you that that is where you need to come in because you gotta start being a heavy hitter. If you want those heavy harvests, like the ones I described and the ones, the praise reports I shared with you at the beginning, you gotta be a heavy hitter, amen. And then let me close with this. I'm gonna pray over your seed in a moment, but I wanna, I wanna close with this. There are some people here that you need to hear this from me. The reason you are connected to this ministry is because God is calling you to be a heavy hitter. He's calling you to the company of lions. He's not calling you to, to the company of cats. And we like cats. I have a cat. But he's calling you to the company of lions. Lions. Amen. Lions. You know, like the lion of the tribe of Judah like the, the animal that they call the king of the jungle, right? Like the, the animal that they say is the top of the food chain because the Bible says that you are to be the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. So it's time for you to be, be connected to a company of lions where the power of God really flows, where the, 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 the blessings of God really flow. It was very important to me to share with you that whole Smoky Mountains experience, because, and this is what I told my husband, I said, my Lord, John, I said, look at what the Lord is doing. Look at what the Lord did. He, he showed me, and I call that a miracle for me. I'm happy she got her miracle, but understand something. As the, as the new, is it pastor? I don't know if I'm a pastor, but as the new leader of this church, now I've been in ministry, you know, for many, many years now, but, God is showing me 
what he is doing in this church and through this church and that he is sending us people. He is sending us people specifically from other locations and they're going to get their miracle here just like I prophesied yesterday before I even got that, before I even got, got, saw that with the Great Smoky Mountains. Did you catch that post? What God is going to do in this church, even outside of this church, and to, uh, among the people in this church. And it's already happening. It's already happening. And I believe you're supposed to be a part of that. The era of powerless church should have never even existed. But it's definitely over now. Amen. And this is a spirit-filled, dunamis-filled, powerful church, a house of prayer, a house of glory, where we expect to encounter, experience, and be touched by the real glory of God. And I believe that's why you're here. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every single person that is here. I thank you, Father, that your hand is upon them. I ask you to hear their prayers, O oh God. I ask you to rapidly respond to them, Father, and send confirmations and answers very quickly. I give you alone all the glory, for it is to you we look, it is to you we put our trust. And I glorify you, God, and I thank you for it. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless and multiply every seed that is being sown. I thank you, God, that you are the great multiplier. You are the great provider. You are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our source. I ask you to multiply, Father, the harvest on every single seed being sown. And I ask you to rapidly accelerate the arrival of next level relationships for everybody under the sound of my voice for me, for my team, for my husband, for our partners, for our followers, for our children, and for my spiritual children, for everyone under the sound of my voice. Next level relationships. That season is upon us. I prophesy it, I decree it, I declare it, and it shall be established. I give Jesus alone the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Get ready to testify, it's gonna happen fast. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday morning. God bless you.